Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the following trigonome um, trigonometry problem. And this is dealing with a little bit of calculus since um, this is asking us to find the minimum value of the following function, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x plus tangent squared of x plus cotangent squared of x plus secant squared of x plus cosecant squared of x. A lot of squares and everything we're dealing with is trigonometric functions. So it's very straightforward on how to find a minimum value. Um, first off, it's just using trig identities to rewrite this as simply as, as possible and then finding a um, sort of minimum value. Specifically, um, we want to find, um, well, the way to um, fix this is rather using some calculus of uh, finding the like global minimum in this case. And that's where we would have to um, and find some um, find a derivative of a function, then of course set that equal to zero, and then um, that will tell us that that's where the slope is equal to zero, and hence you know that's where the either the maximum or the minimum is, depending on what function you're taking the derivative of. So that's basically the gist. So let's just jump in. So given our trigonometric function, so let's rewrite this a little bit differently. So sine square of x and cosine square of x is just going to remain the same. But let's rewrite everything else. So tangent square of x, that's the same thing as uh, sine square of x divided by cosine square of x. Cotangent is just the opposite. So the numerator is cos um, cosine square of x. Then denominator is sine square of x. Add this with um, secant square of x. That's just one over cosine square of x. And then cosecant uh, square of x is just one divided by uh, sine square of x. So obviously we know from the fundamental theorem of trigonometry, so sine square of x was cosine square of x, that's just equal to one. So we have that. Now um, let's actually get a common denominator for these two. Um, so we can actually just multiply, you know, the products with the denominator below. Um, even though they share the same here, but let's actually keep things separate at a time. So I'll um, multiply the products here and um, do the butterfly method for these two functions and then do the same thing over here, but we're gonna keep that separate even though they share the same um, denominator as you can tell. So for the first part we have just, this will be sine to the fourth of x, then add this with cosine to the fourth of x, and obviously the denominator is going to be cosine square of x multiply with sine square of x. Then we apply the same thing over here, this is just sine square of x, add this with cosine square of x, Divide this under the same denominator just like before, cosine square of x times sine square of x. So now let's actually fix this, um, the middle term right here. What I'm gonna do is actually I'm going to add and subtract the following term. So let's see, we're gonna keep sine to the fourth x the same. I'm actually going to add and subtract a two sine um, square of x multiplied by cosine square of x. Subtract with the same thing here. And of course, this is added with um, cosine of fourth x. Then it's just divided by under the same denominator, cosine square of x, sine square of x. Oops. Then right here, and just keep the same thing before. So sine square of x. I know we can say we can write this as equal to one, but let's um, let's uh, save that part for later. Eventually, thou. Um, Eventually, if we write down everything, it's gonna come down nice. So let's just leave it the way it is, just for a bit. So now in the middle term, the num numerator specifically, you can actually, um, well, for the f for the first, the second, and the fourth term, you can actually write this as a square of the binomial factor square. So in other words, you write this as one plus, then this will be sine square of x, add this with cosine square of x, then square that, since if you just apply the FOIL method, you'll get the same thing for these, um, the first, second, and fourth term. Then I'll subtract with two sine square of x divided by cosine square of x. And the same thing under the denominator here. Um, maybe I should write cosine square of x first and multiply sine square of x. Okay, then we're gonna, still gonna keep this the same, the same thing the way it is, just for a sec. We can um, simplify some things further. So here we have one plus, so sine square of x plus so cosine square of x, we just, we already know that's equal to one, so that's one square. Over here, that's gonna be one, um, one over here, so if you just, and they share the same um, denominator, so if we could just combine the two, then 
it will be 2 divided by um, cosine squared of x, then times sine squared of x. And then just using the rules with, when we're dealing with linearity with fractions, obviously we can split this into two fractions. Then you'll notice that sine squared of x, cosine squared of x, they just cancel each other out from both the numerator and denominator, so we're just left with subtract 2. Then just perform a little bit more of arithmetic, simplifying some stuff, we'll have just 2 times um, sine squared of x, then cosine squared of x, and then just subtract with 1. All right. So let me just justify this by saying um, that this is what we've shown so far in the green. This is not our final answer, obviously, because our final answer is a value, not a function. So this is what we have so far. And then we're going to note the following, that a little identity we can use is that we know that sine square of x, then multiply with cosine square of x, that the um, trig identity says that that's equal to 1 half multiplied by sine of 2x. All right, so we can just replace this denominator over here. So this is just two then um, divided by, so this this is an input square. So this is one half um, sine of two x square, then subtract one. You can write this a little further. Then we see that, um, let's see, we squared the one over, we squared the one half, so it's one over four, flip the reciprocal. So then the numerator would just be an eight, then divide it by, sine square of 2x, then subtract 1. So now the last part is, um, how do we go further from here if we want to find, um, if we're being specifically asked to find the minimum value? Let's actually do a little bit of a calculus over here. So here we have the function um, 8 divided by sine square of 2x. I guess the one thing to note is obviously you can see that since this is a square, the function itself is always going to be positive. So what happens if we're going to find the um, specifically the minimum, then using calculus, we would have to find, you know, the extrema. So what we do is just, just using the derivative. So d over dx of our, um, specifically, we're looking at just the um, 8 sine squared 2x. Well, I guess we can subtract 1 with that include the inclusion 2, but obviously that's derivative of minus 1. It's just, you know, 0. So we could just ignore that. Um, so sine squared of 2x. And then, in other words, you can actually write this as using trig functions. This is actually cosecant. So 8 times um, cosecant square of 2x really is just equal to, um, and then you can, using your own um, chain rule, so it's not that hard to show that um, this is supposed to be negative 32 multiplied by um, cosecant square of 2x, and obviously apply the chain rule, or, well, uh, apply to the um, the derivative of the trig function itself. Cosecant squared 2x is just basically 2 times um, cotangent 2x. I just I already multiplied the 2 for over here, so that's fine. So then we have cotangent of 2x. Okay, now we set this equal to 0. Setting that equal to 0 implies that we have to find our slope at um, the function over here is where the slope is 0. Uh, let's actually fix this a little bit better so we're actually dealing with um, trig functions. So I can just divide a um, negative 32 to both sides, that will get rid of that, so we're just left with um, secant squared 2x and then cotangent 2x. Now let's actually use a little bit of trig identity over here, cosecant squared is just the same thing as 1 over sine squared of 2x. Multiply cotangent, this is just cosine, um, well not squared, but just cosine of 2x, then divide it by sine of 2x. Okay. We just combine together, then this is just cosine of um, cosine of 2x divided by sine cube of 2x equals 0. Just multiply sine cube to both sides and still preserve the quality for 0. So we have that cosine of 2x is equal 0. Apply the inverse cosine, then obviously um, cos inverse cosine of 0 is just pi over 2. So we're left with 2x is equal to pi over 2, but this replies, this is not just specifically a pi over 2, this is actually including for every single um, interval of um, plus k of pi, where k is um, an integer. Then if we just solve for x, then x is just equal to pi divided by 4 um, plus pi, um, well, yeah, pi, uh, k times pi divided by 2, I can put it like that k times pi divided by 2. 
And you can also graph, you can actually graph the function yourself specifically just to see this, but let's say you weren't um, allowed a calculator. Obviously you could tell that for, um, if you, for X, then it, it'd be, it, when it's undefined at zero, X will have to be zero for it in order to be ident um, undefined. And that implies for every single plus uh, K pi over two. So what we show is that X equal to pi over four plus K pi two for K is an integer. This is where the um, slope is equal to zero. And this also implies that this is where the local, um, the minimum, the minimum peers at for um, each of the intervals that you're dividing this into, you're looking at through the entire real line. Okay, so basically we just say, we just plug um, x or pi over four over here, then sine square of two times pi over four, that's um, sine square of pi divided by two. Um, that's just going to equal one. So we can actually use this adjustment and create ourselves like a little um, lower bound. So we can actually write this as a inequality. So eight, then sine square, of 2x um, subtract 1. Obviously, we can see that thing um, with this inclusion that it's um, greater than or equal to, then we could just say 8 because even though you plug pi over 4, so this is just 8, then subtract with 1, then therefore we get that it's equal to 7, implying that 7 is our minimum value of our trigonometric function like so. So yeah, there's um, a lot of neat things here going on. A little bit of calculus, a little bit of trigonometry, um, well, not really a little bit, but there's a whole lot of trigonometry, but it comes down to, um, it's really just calculus, if anything else, if I want to say that. So, yep, seven minimum value of sine squared plus cosine squared x plus tangent squared x plus cot. I'm trying to say this as fast as I can. Let me not mess, my, mess up my tongue. Seven is the minimum value of sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x plus tangent squared of x plus cotangent squared of x plus secant squared of x plus cosecant squared of x. Nailed it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.